does. Um, from the official documentation, um, you can search webhook directly in here by typing webhook. And the first um, result that comes, I can click on it, it takes you to this page. It says webhook are user defined HTTP callbacks. For a select doc type, you can create a webhook that trigger, triggers on specific document events under certain conditions. Okay, um, in this um, video, I'm going to show you how to work with two webhooks, basically two webhooks. The first is the inbuilt webhooks that has to do with doc type events. And the other one is you also being able to receive um, kind of data into your system. But first, I'm going to work with this webhook. Then the important thing here is to explain webhook um, theoretically first. OK, I have this first image from this URL. You have this kind of a screen here, a phone, and a padlock. And this second image shows something, um, a user trying to sign up for a sign into a site. You have a phone for receiving information and uh, confirmation of information. Okay, let me explain this quickly. First, um, you try to register for uh, in a website. You try to register, then you fill in your username, password, and your phone number. Once you click register, the website sends you an OTP, kind of a one-time password. Then you feed in the OTP into the registration form or a form provided to you. And once you click that, you are you have been confirmed. Now, how does this relate to webhook? Webhook is kind of a URL where you send data upon an event um, trigger. Once an event triggers, you want data to be sent to somewhere. That is why when you sign up to the form, the location where the data should be sent to is your phone number or your email address, as the case may be. Once this address is known and you try to sign up, information will be sent to your phone. That is the address where the webhook data or payload will be sent to. And you can decide to do something with whatever was sent to you. Okay, have a second case where you make transaction, you send money from your account to somebody else. Once you send that money out, a debit alert, or once you receive money, a credit alert will come to your phone. Now, that is a hook because the banking system or the notification or transaction systems already has an address where a message will be sent. Say, okay, um, a transaction has just occurred in your um, account. And here is the details of the transactions. That's what a web, that is what a webhook is. And how can we work with a webhook in our doc type? Say in your doc type, you inserted a document or you made an update to a document or you deleted a document or submitted. You want an information to be sent somewhere, right? The location where the information should be sent could be your system itself or an external system. It could be a hardware. It could be a server somewhere. It could just be anything that can be communicated to, that can receive information, that can receive data. Okay, how can we send out a payload from our ERP next or Frappy whenever we work on a doc type? Okay, you can use any doc type particularly, but I'm still going to use my estate doc type to work. Um, first, I'm going to type webhook here, webhook. And in here, you just create your webhook or just add webhook or any of this should be fine. The first information you feel is a naming series, just select it, or if you have created your own naming series, you can select. Now, which, um, what trigger do you want to be the starter for the webhook? Do you want once the document is inserted, updated, submitted, canceled, or whatever? I'm going to use update because I already have so many documents. I don't want to add new documents. What doc type do you want this um, webhook event to occur? I'm going to use my proper doc type. Can you use any of your doc type? The next boss is which condition? Do you have any condition in mind? If you have condition, you can put it here. But now I have no condition. I just want my code to trigger to work. Here is 
the request URL. This URL could be an external URL. It could be your internal URL. You just want to send something. Okay, a payment system, for example, if you use um, Stripe or some other payment system, like here we have payment system like Paystack, Water. Once um, a client or a customer pays to you using the platform, um, a data should be sent. You want um, some information sent to your system. It could be this ERP next system, it can be an external system. You have to provide the URL where the information should be sent. Okay, for the now, I'm going to use, um, I think I have a URL here. I, I may have to use the agent URL. Agent. I'll just use that. You can use any URL at all. You can use any URL at all. Okay. Now I'm going to use this URL. I grab the entire URL, paste it here. Meaning that once that event occurs, the data will be sent to this URL and we're going to see how it works. Okay. Um, next is what type of data do you want to send? You can send your data into format. It could be a form data. It could be a JSON data. And you can decide to enable security to the webhook. But I'm just going to first use um, this form URL encoded data. Once you click on this, you'll find this webhook headers. You can leave it as it is without changing any content, except you want to add extra header to it. Then you maybe you want to add some kind of an encryption key to it such that at the other side, you can use the key to decrypt the information to be sure that it is the right um, sender that sent you the payload or, doc or data. Next, the data you want to send over to this URL, um, this URL, the data based on the doc type you selected will be based on the doc type. I selected property doc type. So once I click on this, it is the information from the doc type that will be retrieved. Um, here, we list all the fields in the property doc type or in whatever doc type you have selected, okay? I want to send the name. Um, I also want to send, um, okay, let me send the agent name. And um, as well, can send the grant total. Yeah, okay, I might also have to select the amenities table. Okay, I'm okay with that. Um, now you can save this. Save this doc type. Okay. Um, what next you can do here is to be sure that this webhook is working perfectly. Since I said that the payload should be sent to this URL, I want to be sure that um, the payload is actually coming to this URL. How can we know that? You can go straight to your code editor. I have my WW folder, I have agents. And in the agent, I have an HTML file. And at the same time, I have my python.py file. In this Python, I received my web request. Okay. Um, if you don't have it, you can just create a Python file with the same name, or the, with the same HTML name. Then in here, recall, you can always get your data using frappy.form dicts. So here I say print um, f. I would like to add new line to separate, so as to separate um, what is going on here to know where my data was locked on the terminal. Okay, here I'm going to have um, frappy dot form dict. The form dict stores um, list of information or data in the request. Okay, I might have to save this. Um, stop my terminal. Restart again. Okay, we can head back and observe that we said once this document is updated, send payload and which payload should be sent. We want the doc type name, the agent's name, grand total, and amenities from our documents. And from this estate app, let's check to see what will be sent. Okay, since my server is still restarting.
Okay, I want the, um, sorry, let me check it. The document name, that is this, the, this here, sent. Then the agent name, I'm uh, sorry, the agent name and um, grand total below here. And what else? I want the amenities present to be sent as well. Okay, and that is an update. I might just have to make small changes right here. Then save. Now, this document has been saved. How do we know that this payload was sent? You can check through your terminal. And you can see the payload right here. And what do you see? You'll see some kind of um, a JSON data sent here, more like Python dictionary. You can see the name was sent, the agent name, um, the grand total, the data, and the amenities, all the contents in the amenities will be sent. Meaning that right here in this our code, you can actually capture what is in this form dict using let's see what was sent to us. Okay, you can capture the form dict directly using name, agent name, and what else? Okay, at least for the now you can you see how you've already seen how you can capture the form dict, um, the data. So now this is how you can send a payload directly to any URL or sorry, a webhook. A webhook is a kind of URL where you send data to based on events that occurs in the system. Now this is you receiving, um, sending out a webhook. How about receiving a webhook? How about getting webhook into your system? Okay, um, we can also do that in another manner. Say we plug in a payment system Okay, I have a payment system here called um, refpay.com. Um, my bad, Riff. refpay.co or flutter with, um, okay, my bad, I just have to type flutter with. Okay, Flutterweb is kind of a payment platform. Let's say you kind of, you know, make payments to this server. You cannot make payment like a user pays you directly. Maybe you have just integrated this payment platform into your system and the user pays you. Now, in the platform, your developer account, you see somewhere called Webhook, um, a kind of URL where you, you have something here. Uh, let me see if I can log into it. Okay, here yeah, I'm logged into the Flutter with payment portal. And you have a button here under the settings, webhooks. And in webhooks, you have a URL. Once you add a URL, URL here, any payment that comes into your account will be sent directly to this URL. It could be um, my ERP Next URL, Frappe URL. Once that is done, The data uh, directly sent to whichever URL you have specified in the Flutter Web account or Paystack account or any of your payment platform. And how do you receive that event? How do you receive the data? Just the same way I could still use this my agent as well. Once the data comes in, if you have specified this, once the data comes in, it will still come through here. Then you can pick up the data sent to you. Once you pick that up, you can use it to kind of validate an invoice in your system or validate a user's account or validate a student's account. Um, um, so now or later, I'm going to do a video of, of payment integration to see how this works. But I hope I've kind of given you a light on how it works. Um, thanks for watching. Please do like and subscribe and share the video to whoever it may benefit. Thank you.